Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We had some technical... That had a lot of difficulties, apparently. We've had some technical difficulties within the last week. I fully recorded this video on the endocannabinoid system entirely out of focus, so I had to get a little bit creative, and now I use this really high-tech stick to sit here in my chair to focus the camera so that we can talk all things cannabis. Sorry for missing a week. Thank you for your patience and let's get into it. I'm still not a doctor. I know, I'm working on it. Still not a doctor, nor do I want to support, encourage, or advocate for people to go and use cannabis under the age or unsafely for whatever country they are in. Don't do illegal things. Blah, blah, blah. There's an intro video with the rest of the disclaimer in the description below. I know it might sound a little bit long and daunting when you say something like the endocannabinoid system, but it's quite simple when you break the word down. So endo means in, cannabinoid is a molecule that is found within cannabis as well as naturally produced in your body, but we'll get into that later. So it's simply the internal cannabinoid system. We all have an endocannabinoid system, and it's actually such a prevalent part of our bodies that it's comparable to your nervous system. So it's not just a system that's in the corner and doesn't do anything unless if you smoke weed. No, it's, it's actively involved in a part of maintaining your body's health and your ability to balance out your kind of internal systems. So the endocannabinoid system has a hand in all of your self-regulatory, uh, so things like sleep cycles, eating, appetite, um, mood relate, related disorders. It's uh, something that helps control your homeostasis, which is a fancy word for the body's ability to balance itself. So this system is very, very important, which is why I find it extra mind-blowing that we never discovered it until we started to study cannabis, hence how it got its name. The endocannabinoid system is comprised of three main parts. You've got the receptors, cannabinoid 1 receptor and cannabinoid 2 receptor. You've got the endocannabinoids themselves, so the cannabinoids your body naturally produces that interact with those receptors. And then you have the enzymes that uh, metabolize the cannabinoids. Let me see. CB1 receptors are primarily located in your central nervous system in a high concentration in your brain because that's where there's a high concentration of your central nervous system. I just got a text message. Yeah. Um, CB2 receptors are primarily located in your peripheral tissue with a high concentration in your spleen. The different concentration locations of these receptors will attest to the cannabinoids that they absorb's ability to affect our bodies. CB2 being located within the spleen has a huge effect on the immune system. So that's why CBD, which is absorbed by the CB2 receptor, really helps um, suppress your immune response of inflammation. On the other hand, you have the CB1 receptor, which I said is primarily located in your central nervous system in your brain, and it absorbs THC. The huge intoxicating effects, the intense head highs that some people might experience, um, THC's effect on your sleeping and a lot of your cognitive functions and your regulatory abilities comes from a high concentration or is at least increased by the high concentration of CB1 receptors in your brain. The reason I get so excited when I talk about the endocannabinoid system is because somehow we didn't know it existed until we discovered cannabis looking into cannabis and researching how cannabis affects the body led to the discovery of the endocannabinoid system which is all just insane to me um, it's exciting for me in the 21st century that um, it's still the 21st century yes it's crazy to me that we're still discovering so much within our bodies especially when you're used to assuming scientists and doctors know so much you go to the doctor and he knows everything so he's gonna fix you right well, somehow, we all just didn't know that our body had a system that is as large and integrated as the nervous system. Tangent. Um, a next step for people in the medical cannabis community or people to understand how cannabis specifically affects our bodies would be the endocannabinoid system. We know it's there. We know that the CB1 receptor and the CB2 receptor are in the cell membranes of different cells. We know that there is the lovely lock and key analogy that will allow cannabinoids to unlock these receptors and change the way our body communicates with itself and change the way we self-regulate. Those are some things that we know. 
But there's been new science and new discoveries seeing that certain types of terpenes, which are um, these little compounds found within all plants but in high concentrations in cannabis as well, but there's been science indicating that specific terpenes like karyophylline, for example, might actually be able to directly interact and affect the endocannabinoid system. And it's not a cannabinoid. So there's a lot of gray area of the endocannabinoid system, but it's something that I find so fascinating and it gives me a lot of hope because the endocannabinoid system is not just about cannabis. Once we understand the endocannabinoid system, we can really start to look at how our bodies naturally combat things like anxiety or depression, your fight and flight response, um, PTSD. These are systems that are hugely affected and, and partially regulated by the endocannabinoid system and our internal cannabinoids. We just don't know how. So having discovered this, having realized that the compounds within cannabis, THC and CBD, change the way the endocannabinoid system regulates our bodies is a huge stepping stone to better understand mental health in general and hopefully take a better approach, um, a more holistic approach or maybe a more gentle approach to treating or assisting the body in regulating things like emotion and sleep patterns, uh, PTSD, and that's just the mental integration of the endocannabinoid system. Those are things that are primarily like cerebrally focused. Like I mentioned in the CBD video, the link is in the description or in this little eye thing that I don't know how to use. Um, CBD is all of the rage nowadays because people feel like it's helping with everything. And I totally agree, CBD can help with so many things, but it's not <clears throat> like the CBD molecule itself, like it is, but it's because inflammation is involved in so many different ailments. So um, people who have Crohn's disease or any kind of gut issue that has resulted in like digestion problems or gas or bloating or whatever, the inflammation of your intestines and your gut and your gut wall is hugely combated by CBD. Therefore digestive issues, Crohn's, leaky gut syndrome are all incredibly helped all the way to things like chronic back pain or arthritis, swelling of joints, back pain, all of those things, again, directly linked to inflammation. This is why CBD is being um, celebrated. And please don't get me wrong, I love CBD and I think it should be celebrated, but it also has limits and bounds. And I get worried when I see people throwing CBD around like it's the end-all be-all because it also can induce a lot of false hope for people who have some issues that maybe CBD won't help with. So, a word of CBD caution, but I'm not going down that tangent any more than I already have. An important tidbit I will let you know is that there are technically different types of cannabinoids. There's endocannabinoids, 2-AG and anandamide, which our body creates internally, and then there are exogenous cannabinoids, which include the 113, 113 different types of cannabinoids found within the cannabis plant. Our body's natural system, the endocannabinoid system, that is designed to absorb our internal endocannabinoids, also absorbs external exogenous cannabinoids. Let me tell you, there's this analogy that everybody within the cannabis community uses often. I have tried to think of a better analogy and a different analogy, and I can't, so we're going to use it. <laughs> it's called the lock and key. The locks are the receptors, and you need the right key to fit into the lock and unlock the lock. Are you following? <laughs> the lock and key analogy is just a really basic visual way to explain how cannabinoids enter your body and interact with your endocannabinoid system. These locks, so CB1 and CB2 receptors, usually unlock for anandamide and 2-AG, the endocannabinoids that our body naturally produces. Um, they do have similar interactions as THC and CBD, uh, which is why they unlock these locks. However, the molecular structure of these two things are different, but similar enough that your body's like, meh, okay, I'll unlock. <laughs> CB1 and CB2 receptors are the locks in this lock and key analogy, and the keys are the cannabinoids that you consume from cannabis, so THC and CBD. THC unlocks the CB1 receptor. CBD unlocks the CB2 receptor. Um, a quick easy way to remember this is 
CB1. The 1 looks like a tall T for THC. That's just my very obscure way to remember what cannabinoid goes into what receptor. <laughs> You're welcome. Something else that I find really interesting about the endocannabinoid system and adds another layer of complexity when it comes to using cannabis as a medicine or understanding your own personal dose with cannabis or how much cannabis you need to feel a certain level of intoxication is that everybody's endocannabinoid system is different. The best way I can really explain that is that say I have 100 CB1 receptors and 200 CB2 receptors. That's how many I have. That means I have more CB2 receptors than I do CB1 receptors, meaning CBD will affect me more than THC. But Joe Blow over there might have 400 CB1 receptors and only 50 CB2 receptors. That's just how his body is. It's the way his cells have developed. It's how his body maintains homeostasis. No two body is the same. That means no two endocannabinoid systems are the same. Some people have up-regulated or down-regulated endocannabinoid systems and we don't understand how or why that really happens yet. There's a lot of things like environmental factors that people believe affect how many uh, receptors are there or how many are active, but it could also be genetics. More research is needed. <laughs> so if you're, if you're a research group, please get on it. There's more research needed in lots of areas of cannabis, but the endocannabinoid system, because it's an integral part of our bodies, should be, in my opinion, pretty high up there, because even without this being about cannabis, understanding how a system within the human body works should be, in my opinion, pretty high up there on human scientists' bucket lists. It's just my opinion. <laughs> Especially something that is so integral in mental health and like our body's ability to regulate themselves, period. Especially in today's and age, like today and age, today's day and age, now. I'm just smack talking scientists over here and I'm not even one. I want more from you. So, this video is going to be a bit shorter than the one that I originally prepared for you guys, mainly because this is now my third time trying to film it. I'm already a week and a half behind on getting this out to you. Um, I hope it finds you in good health, and again, thank you for your patience. I will be doing more of a deep dive on some other endocannabinoid topics because there is honestly so much to unpack here. I don't want to just sit and ramble at you guys for 30 minutes. But, thank you for sticking with me for this big term heavy endocannabinoid intro. If you have any questions or specific things that you want me to include in our next endocannabinoid ramble, I would gladly do so. So just leave a comment below and I will include it to the best of my ability. I hope you guys have a fantastic week and you are healthy and happy and enjoying your November or December, January, wherever you watch this. I hope this finds you very, very well. Hit that subscribe button. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and thanks. Have a good one, guys. Cheers.